Howdy, 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 my name's Anakshi Sasuke, and welcome, finally, back to Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. I'm glad I still saved the last video I did for this, because I definitely didn't remember where I left off at, because it's been... some time. Anyway, uh, in the last episode, we apparently did Organ Eater, Altruistic Utopia, Automatic Artist, Illustrated Climbing Vine, and Watch for the White Bird. This time, we're going to do Miniature Solar System, The Fruit Tree, Spellcheck Vasily, Sourdough Starter, and The Groomers. Now, I've recorded this entire episode before, and then my computer died while I was doing my outro, and then I just stopped for a while. It sounds like that was happening because of my microphone. I got a new cable for that. It hasn't happened since. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. Now, okay, miniature solar system. <clears throat> also, for the sake of not, like, wasting time, I did find out the last time I recorded this that pumpkins are fruits! We'll get there! Okay, so, special containment procedures. 756 10 by 10 meter cells to remain accessible only by airlock. Personnel entering must wear EVA spacesuits with an MMU if necessary, and ensure that they do not move too close to any of the planetoids in orbit. No lights are to be shown on or toward the planetoids, and anything that might be loosely described as a heat source must be kept as far away from them as possible. Developments on the surface of each planet are to be examined twice daily by a probe equipped with an electron microscope and a data expunged. Though recorded footage will have to be played in slow motion in order to make the slightest bit of sense. In the event that Planet Force inhabitants attempt to build another satellite weapon, see Incident Report A, personnel assigned to remove it must remain aware that although missiles fired from Forest Service cannot penetrate standard issue spacesuits, helmets, or visors, weapons platforms will almost certainly fire more quickly than the average human being can move. Description: 756 has a miniature solar system consisting of a single yellow sun and six orbiting planets, each with various moons and satellites. The system is restricted to the confines of a single large cell originally intended for SB Blank. The cell itself is now devoid of gravity and atmosphere, a state believed to be brought about by 756's birth. The system's sun is approximately 68 to 70 centimeters in circumference and is believed to be in the middle stages of its existence based on comparisons with archived footage. The planets orbiting it range in circumference from less than 7 centimeters to 28 centimeters. 756 was first discovered on the body of researcher Blankety Blank after he unexpectedly collapsed during a minor cell inspection in Blank Blank Blank. For several hours beforehand, Mr. Blank had been complaining of numerous painful boils on his back. Following his loss of consciousness, a cursory examination showed that these boils were actually minute fragments of rock protruding from his flesh. However, one boil positioned on the back of Mr. Blank's neck appeared to be emitting intense heat, likely the reason for his collapse. According to the instruments situated within the cell, the temperature of this boil climbed from 70 degrees Celsius to above 550 degrees Celsius. By then, all witnesses had fled the cell and sealed the airlock behind them, leaving Mr. Blank's incendiary death to be recorded by the security camera. So, whoosh. When it was ascertained that the heat emerging from the neck boil had stabilized and was not projecting further than 2 meters, Personnel returned to the cell and found that the interior was now a little more than a vacuum contained by reinforced concrete. The neck boil had become a new star, while the small rocky protrusions had begun to form simple planets. Since then, 756 has remained under observation, with particular emphasis on the evolution of life in the system. However, it has been observed that both astronomical bodies and any life forms that may evolve upon them experience time at an accelerated rate. Within a year of 756 formation, the volcanic surfaces of several planets had given way to oceans, a process that would normally take millions of years. Some years later, researchers observing Planet 3 noticed the form noted the formation and collapse of an empire over the course of 10 hours, estimated to measure at least a century in 756's time span. The planets themselves, based on the latest survey, are Planet 1, volcanic and far too close to the sun to support life, 2, generally mountainous terrain with a large population of apparent non-sapiens, 3, mostly ocean dotted with islands of varying biome, presently inhabited by a sapient species of nomadic reptilians with a religion based on ocean ties and the unexpected sight of Dr. Blank's helmeted face in the night sky. Planet 4, primarily composed of data expunged, broken only by what appears to be missile silos and military installations, many of them believed to be covering underground cities. Planet 5, heavily populated, with many large settlements built around wildly varying terrains. Unlike 4, the inhabitants have not achieved space travel, and as a result are currently at peace. Planet 6, equally hospitable until the events of Blankety Blank Blank's the incident report A, which is not here, and has since reverted to uninhabited wastelands. Addendum. Any personnel caught gl placing glow-in-the-dark stars on the walls of the cell will be reassigned to paperwork. So, next up is the... not that. 
the fruit tree. Which is safe. 757 has been transplanted to a garden plot at Biosite 103, which is to be under constant surveillance. Access uh, to 757 requires authorization from a researcher with level 3 clearance. The plot is to be cleaned of all rotten instances of one twice a month, and they are to be incinerated on site. 757 is a fruit producing tree similar to Prunus prasica, the common peach tree, that is 3.63 meters tall. The texture and properties of its wood are identical to that of Malus domesticus, apple tree. It is easily broken, damaged, or burnt. Its leaves are identical to those of ordinary Prunus persica. persica. Every dawn, 757 produces new fruits, which are collectively designated one. Growth takes five minutes on average, although the size of the fruit is directly proportional to the growth time. Instances of one remain in place for the duration of the day, and at dusk fall to the ground and rot rapidly. The amount of time of an instance, uh, the amount of time an instance of one takes to rot is directly proportional to its size. Human beings viewing one while at, uh, while it remains attached to 757 display a minor compulsion to consume it. Instances of one that are universe are universally reported to be extremely sweet and delicious. If a subject consumes any part of an instance of one, a new organ will form in the anterior of the subject's abdomen. This process is reported to be very painful. Over the course of a week, a new fruit of the type consumed by the subject forms inside this organ, causing further pain and visible swelling, and in the case of a very large fruit, tissue damage. When the fruit is ripe, it is forced up a tube leading to the esophagus and ejected from the mouth, distorting the subject's tissue in order to pass. It is almost all. It almost always causes permanent damage in this passage, despite the fruit itself being distorted to some degree in the course of ejection. The object regurgitated is always an ordinary, perfectly formed specimen of the fruit typical, uh, the fruit type initially consumed. It does not possess 757 and one's anomalous properties. 757 has been observed to produce the following types of fruit in decreasing order of frequency. Peaches, plums, apples, pears, watermelons, bananas, pineapples, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, kumquats, kiwi fruit, lemons, and in one case, pumpkins. Pumpkins. Fruit. Pumpkins. I googled it. It's, it's, it's true. There is presently no cure for 757's effects. If the new organ is surgically removed before the fruit regurgitation, it regrows at a rate identical to that of the first growth. Testing to determine a physical, chemical, genetic, or foreign cause of the effects is pending. Testing to determine whether one's juice retains its anomalous effects is pending approval. Proposals to cross-pollinate 757 with 1147 have been denied. 757 was discovered in blank blank after several reports of people regurgitating fruit appeared in a local newspaper. It was eventually discovered in the backyard of an abandoned house. A large amount of rotten fruit was found in its base along with several malnourished corpses. Nice. Next up is, again, not that, let me just scroll down a little bit, the spell check, Vasily. And it's safe. 758 is to be kept in comfortable living quarters with whatever amenities he desires so long as they are within Foundation Protocol. 758's quarters need neither lock nor guard. If he is found wandering the halls, contact one of the doctors studying the subject. He is to receive three meals a day and any snacks he may request. When speaking directly to 758, he is to be addressed as Vasily at all times. Vasily is a young Russian male, 1.9 meters tall, weighing roughly 110 kilograms. Full name Vasily blankety blank, found in blank Russia 19 something. The subject was diagnosed as an extremely low-functioning autistic at the age of four. While it is only speculation, some members of the staff believe that the symptoms co which caused Vasily to be diagnosed with autism are a coping mechanism that has been developed in response to his ability. At present, researchers have been unable to ascertain whether or not he, has, he actually has autism or if this is the case. Addendum 1. There's a de de okay, I guess that was just the whole description. Addendum. Records taken from the notes of Dr. Blankety Blank Blank, the subject's speech and behavioral, behavioral therapist prior to coming to the Foundation. Two years after his diagnosis, this is not a good voice because this is a Russian dude. I, what, what, what is it? It's 11 o'clock in the morning in November. I'm not prepared to do a Russian accent. Sorry. Uh, two years after his diagnosis, M58 began displaying his ability to recognize and correct errors in the technical aspects of linguistics. At the age of six, Vasily began correcting mistakes in the newspaper his parents read. The corrections included mistakes in grammar, punctuation, spelling, and syntax. During the following weeks, Vasily was given increasingly advanced material, including magazines, essays written for the classes the subject's mother taught, and eventually graduate-level college textbooks and encyclopedia volumes. Upon learning what they believed to be a savant talent, Vasily's Dr. Blank advised limiting the subject to a single language so as to not overstimulate him. At the age of Blank, Vasily found a pamphlet written in Mandarin on the ground outside a store. 
Vasily picked it up and, after staring at it at the page for a few moments, began correcting the pamphlet in the same manner as he had done with previous materials. Dr. Blank began giving him materials in every language they could find. Discovery. Agents Blank, while on psych leave, see Med 861379, which is not here and we'll never know, overheard uh, Vasily's parents discussing his talents and reported what he heard to the Foundation immediately. Upon performing a CT scan, Scan and an MRI it was discovered by Dr. Bright and Dr. English that the language center of the subject's brain was non-existent. This led to the conclusion that the subject was an SCP, as he should not be capable of any amount of linguistic processing, much less to the degree of his ability allowed him. He was immediately brought to Site Blank for study, where he remains in containment. See Research Log 758 for records of progress. What happened to his parents? Addendum 2. Effective immediately, Vasily is being reclassified as safe and his containment, containment procedures are being changed accordingly. He does not understand the Foundation's number designation system, so any personnel speaking with him should address him as Vasily if they wish to receive any kind of response. Addendum 3. It has been determined that uh, Vasily is speaking truthfully when he claims that he does not understand the languages he is reading. As such, any personnel wishing to utilize his ability for proofreading official documents may submit a request to Dr. Bright for access to the subject before or after his scheduled study sessions with Dr. English and Dr. Sarlin. Note, yes, there is an academic speculation about whether or not current translations of religious texts match the original messages of the same text. No, Vasily will not be used to find out. It just doesn't matter that much to us, so stop asking. Research Log It has now been three weeks since I was assigned to research Vasily's ability. To date, no progress has been made as the subject is either unwilling or unable to interact with my staff. We've begun leaving texts in his quarters in the hopes he will happen upon them in his own time rather than attempting to coerce him. He's begun making corrections to the text we leave in his quarters and is also beginning to show some signs of recognition and trust towards Dr. Sarlin and myself. This is currently the limitation of his interactions. Thus far, we've only provided the subject with modern terrestrial languages. Yesterday, the subject was provided computer coding for the first time. Not sure of his abilities with a computer, the coding was printed on normal paper. The subject simply stared at it with a confused look on his face. Today, he was placed at a computer terminal with the same code on the screen, and after a few moments, he began correcting the errors in the code. Today, tests with dead languages and languages suspected of, to be of extraterrestrial or extra-dimensional origin began. SCPs with knowledge of such languages, including SCP Blank and Blank, were asked to provide us with two samples of each language for comparison, one that was, to their knowledge, properly written, and one that had a number of technical errors with varied spectrum of subtlety. All SCPs complied with our request without resistance. Vasily's ability once again proved effective. Today, the idea was brought up that Vasily's ability may extend to math, since it technically can be considered a language. The subject was presented with basic algebra proofs, at which point he spoke for the first time since coming to the facility, informing us that math isn't really a language. Since Vasily began speaking to Dr. English and I, we have learned that when he looks at text, the only language he can actually read is his native Russian. All other languages simply recognizes the errors that exist and how they should be corrected. Today it was discovered by accident that Vasily's ability is not restricted to written language. As the subject passed two guards, he overheard them speaking French and, despite having no knowledge of the French language, corrected one of the guards on the way he constructed a sentence. Further testing will be required in this area. After more, more in-depth study, it has been found that when applying his ability to spoken language, Vasily is capable of correcting dialect, accent, and pronunciation in addition to the technical aspects of written language he can correct. When asked to read a written language aloud, he's proven fully capable of speaking the words, but states he still does not understand them. Vasily has shown an ability to essentially translate across time. That is to say, his ability has an understanding of the concept of a living language, and he has proven himself capable of changing a text written in a given time period, and change any colloquialisms and evolved words to provide a translated copy that results in the same message as the original text. In cases where he has attempted this with dead languages, he fully translated the text into the nearest living language from the time period he was asked to change it to. While he can update text to later generations of a language, it seems that he is not able to revert text to older generations of a language. Vasily has shown himself able to produce the proper pronunciation of written words upon request. To date, Dr. Sarlin and I have learned to fluently speak multiple dead languages with assistance from Vasily. I can only assume that'll come in handy. Then that brings us to the sourdough starter. Which to me sounded like it was going to raise some sort of sourdough plant. I'm, I'm starting to remember how this went now. Um, all samples of 759 are to be stored in wide mouth, airtight, ceramic, or glass lined containers. Samples are to be kept at uh, temperatures no lower than 0 0.9 degrees Celsius and no higher than 11.4 degrees Celsius unless in active use. 
once per week. The following procedures to be observed by the assigned personnel for each active sample. Oh, I remember this now! <laughs> uh, <clears throat> record date... Record date at time of feeding, feeder name, and feeder emotional state at time of feeding. Open sample container. Record visual olfactory condition of sample. Pour off and retain upper layer of liquid or stir into main sample as assigned by foundation orders. Remove 125 grams of sample in an airtight inert container. Retain for ongoing analysis or other use as required. Add 125 grams of unbleached, unbromated, all-purpose white flour and 125 grams of pure distilled water. So with clean, unpainted wooden implement until fully incorporated, seal container returned to cold storage. All removed samples are to be tracked and accounted for. 757 is a 500 gram massive sourdough starter composed primarily of wheat flour and water. The starter's active component is an ongoing culture of wild yeast including Candida millari and that. In symbiotic balance with multiple strains of Lactobacillus and Acetobacter organisms. The original sample first gained the foundation attention after a sudden spontaneous outbreak of attempted murders motivated by apparently baseless jealousy in redacted county Vermont. Without exception, the would-be murderers had recently participated in a pancake breakfast fundraiser at the local Methodist church. Further investigation led directly to a single batch of old-fashioned belt-in-your-mouth sourdough flapjacks produced by a chef with a long-standing untreated case of borderline personality disorder. The chef's starter was conf confiscated and replaced with a visually and olfactorily indistinguishable sample of equal mass and volume. Like all starters, 759 acquires a certain amount of its internal composition from its immediate environment. What distinguishes it from other sourdough is its ability to absorb the emotional state of the individuals who tend it, feed it, and bake with it, and transmit that emotional state or a close derivative theref thereof to anyone who consumes the resultant end product. Relevant variables include length of exposure and intensity of emotional state. Absorption of emotional information ceases upon the baked product achieving 57.5 degrees Celsius for one minute. Testing of emotional information absorption while samples are in frozen or dried state is ongoing, but preliminary evidence indicates that any such absorption is slowed to the point of negligibility. Log of tests! Sample condition, initial recovered sample, raised and fed daily at room temperature for one week. All researchers signed in at feeding time with emotional status of calm or neutral. They, uh, they used a batch of the sourdough flapjacks from the original recipe. No change in emotional state of subjects. <clears throat> raised and fed weekly for one month uh, by uh, disposable dudes with documented anger management issues and poor impulse control. Two San Francisco style baguettes. After consumption, approximately half of the first baguette with butter and jam, an argument broke out over the rightful ownership of the second. The question was rendered moot when one of the subjects picked up the second loaf and attempted to beat his fellow senseless with it, effectively destroying the remaining bread. Sample condition. Raised and fed weekly for uh, one month by volunteers under the influence of mood elevating medication. 16 plain bagels. Significant improvement of mood and temperament in 80% of test subjects for 6 hours. Remaining 20% experienced nausea, abdominal bloating, and fatigue. May have been undiagnosed uh, celiac sprue. The test subjects reported feeling significantly more philosophical and mellow about their condition than expected. Uh, raised and fed weekly for one month by automated machinery, baked entirely by automated machinery in isolation. Three stage French uh, pain au levain. No emotional change noted. Several testers noted a tinny or metallic taste. Kept in uh, SCP 682's containment chamber for one hour. One loaf chala braided style. Initial response appears similar to that of the baguette experiment in that test subjects became aggressive and argumentative shortly after ingesting several slices. I'm, I'm not sure why I said argumentative like that. I've never really been able to say that the right way out loud. Rather than attacking each other, the test subjects finished the loaf, proceeded to the test kitchens, and began a systematic attempt at the destruction of every other baked good not made with 759 as its primary leavening agent. So it proved difficult to subdue. Sample condition, also kept in that containment chamber for an hour, adulterated shortly thereafter with 10 grams of dry domestic yeast. One batch of English muffins. Experiment supervisor Dr. Blank specifically requested the change to something with less weight to throw around if the testers got stroppy. Baked under same conditions as the aggression chala. That just immediately became cranky, uncooperative, and argumentative upon the consumption of the test product. The result has been unofficially dubbed grumpy muffins. Sample condition. Raised and fed daily at room temperature under the bed of newly married agent for one week. Example use, six blueberry muffins. Result, data expunged. It was probably an orgy. 
That's what I was talking about when it was at the end of the episode. I was talking about the fact that these six blueberry muffins probably caused an orgy because they took the thing that grabs emotions and made muffins out of it after having it under the bed of a newlywed who was probably having his honeymoon, probably doing a lot of fucking, and they made muffins with it that probably caused an orgy. And then my recording cut out. But I've said it now, moving on. Personnel diagnosed with severe clinical depression. Unlo unlike prior experiments, the liquid layer was not stirred into the main mass of the start of the feeding time, but drawn off and retained separately. Resultant product was then filtered to remove particulate matter and added to lone test subjects alcohol and beverage of choice for one week. Liquid despair. Such so began to exhibit signs of emotional distress within minutes of consuming the first doped beverage. Psychological evaluation at the end of the week indicated a depressive state uh, on the order of the diagnosed in feeder personnel, including suicidal ideation, uh, symptoms uh, symptoms had largely cleared two weeks after cessation of experiment, but lingering effects remained. The possible foundation used for 759 are numerous and should be self-evident. Requesting the permission to use, test liquid despair, minimum potency, and LD50 as possible means of inducing suicide and otherwise problematic, problematic targets. So, if I thought I could get away with it, this episode would in fact be titled Orgy Muffins, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get away with that. I feel like YouTube would get really mad at me if I tried to do that. Moving on. SCP-760. It's safe, but it don't, it don't look safe. Uh, each specimen of 760 is to be kept in an individual containment area. The locks on the doors to these containment areas are to be changed every month. Feedings composed of blank grams of a nutrient-rich paste are to be uh, issued once a day. Specimens are only to be introduced to each other in experiments meant to observe... Uh, social interactions, and subsequent psychological events between specimens. At least two armed guards are to be posted outside of each containment area at any time. Each containment area is to be lit with no, no more than one 40-watt light bulb and equipped with low, bright surveillance cameras. In the event of an equipment malfunction, equipment should be manually replaced as soon as possible, as instances of 760 have a tendency to disassemble maintenance equipment. Okay. Personnel are allowed to give specimens of... 760 items that they no longer want or need given that the objects do not violate current foundation regulation and that they are approved by the overseeing researcher items requested for donation to 760 include but are not limited to car keys denied a broken clock approved rubis cube approved everyday trash denied broken foundation computer approved provided that the hard drive is removed approved removed rhymes 760 is a vaguely humanoid species of animal only three of which have ever been obtained by the foundation the skeletal and muscular systems of 760 differ greatly in areas from those of humans, the most notable effects of these instances being legs that extrude perpendicular to the torso and an ape-like curvature of the spine that results in a preference to walk on all fours. Other notable differences include the addition of an extra joint on each finger of 760 and an average of 150% of the joint degrees of freedom that are allowed for humans. This makes 760 much more flexible than the average human, which aids specimens during feeding. Where a face would be on a human, there's a mass of hair on 760. This hair is shown to have some sort of sensory function that allows for sight in the dark. Underneath the hair, there are no eyes, nose, or mouth. However, the skin of the face is pulled taut. Taut. Either or. As a part of a speaker-like vocal system. 760 has muscle structures in the front of their head that they can use to vibrate the skin as if it were a drum head, producing a variable pitched whine. Further observation led to the discovery that this vocal structure is also capable of opening and serving as a mouth. Within this mouth is a tongue approximately 40 centimeters in length, but with a salt with a soft but coarse texture, like a cat probably. The epidermis of 760 is shown to react to light in a way that makes them invisible. This is done via a complex system of reflective data expunged, roughly 78% of 760's skin. The hair on 760's head disappears as well. Biological analysis shows that the hair shows the hair to be similar in composition to a polar bear's. As light dims, however, this effect fades, and in very dim light, it's possible to see 760 completely. Removal of the skin also hinders this effect, and it appears to do so on more areas of 760 than where the skin was removed, suggesting that the function of 760's invisibility on any part of the body requires the same function on all surrounding parts. It is also worth noting that 760 appears agitated when subjected to light for longer than what would be normal sunlight hours near latitude blank north or blank south. Instances of 760 are very docile under normal circumstances. They exhibit behavior and tendencies similar to canines or primates, thus making understanding what they are thinking relatively easy. They are generally curious creatures, 
Any object that is placed in the containment area is almost sure to be examined thoroughly by them. They seem to enjoy toying with new things, particularly taking objects apart and examining their pieces. They also seem to enjoy attempting to figure out how things work, and as long as they are attempting to learn about something, they are completely content to stay in the containment area. Contributions of objects by personnel have served as more than enough to keep this want for new objects appeased. It is, generally speaking, entirely safe to enter the containment area, and specimens of 760 seem to either enjoy or be indifferent to the presence of people. They have shown behaviors towards humans that are almost childlike in nature, and almost always benevolent. Instances of 760 appear to be particularly interested in sleeping humans. In experiments performed investigating this, it was discovered that specimens of 760 feed on human secretions and dead matter. When presented with a sleeping human, 760 will proceed to carefully position itself over the subject onto their chest if the subject is sleeping on their back, and begin vocalizing at approximately 20 decibels for a period of blank to blank minutes. This vocalization appears to s promote slow wave sleep in blank percent of subjects, greatly reducing the chance of the subject awakening. The exact mechanism responsible for this effect is unknown, but is thought to involve data expunged. In the remaining percent, blank percent, the subject is largely unaffected by the vocalization and may regain some level of consciousness. Several subjects who have reported this experience have likened it to sleep paralysis, stating that they woke to find themselves aware of an inhuman presence in the room, but unable to move. After this period, 760 will use its tongue to consume any easily accessible secretions present on the subject, including ocular discharge, hair oils, dead skin cells, pimples, and redacted. This process has been observed to be largely harmless to the subject. <coughs> However, experimental observation indicates that if the subject shifts during sleep or some external event occurs, 760 may become startled and exert additional force on the subject, in several cases causing sore areas and slight bruising. 1. Research into weaponizing the invisibility is impending approval. Addendum 2. On blank blank 2000 something, 86 days after the initial discovery of 760, another specimen was obtained, revealing it to be a member of a species rather than an independent creature. Specimen previously in possession reclassified as 1, and newly obtained specimen was reclassified as 2. Research into the social interactions between the two began immediately following 2's arrival at Sector 5. Addendum 3. One or two were observed taking part in what appears to be some sort of mating ritual which involved blank consecutive hours of consistently screaming at each other and data expunged resulted in the immediate medical treatment of one and the knowledge that specimens of 760 are hermaphroditic. Uh, two gave birth, subject entitled 3. Incident Report 761-I. On blank plane 2000 something at approximately 2148, one of the guards posted it contained one fell asleep on a shift. One was somehow able to see this, suggesting that the hairs on his face allow it to sense through walls. It then proceeded to its containment door and partially disassembled it from the inside, a process taking roughly blank hours, and proceeded to feed on the guard as he slept. The other guard was unaware of this due to one's act of camouflage in the hallway lights, but proceeded to coast it back to his containment area the moment he realized what was happening. So, that was a relatively harmless episode, except for the, um, the muffins. So, this has been Anashi Sasuke, this was episode 1, I believe, 161 of Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki, and the next one we're going to be checking out the slightly less dangerous trampoline, Immortal Iron Maiden, Human Beowulf Cluster, The Obscene Show, and Duck Pond. If you like this, a like and subscribe will be groovy, if you didn't, you don't need to do either one of those things, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Later!